Hi, uh, under this chapter democracy in the contemporary world, we in the previous topic we had already studied through the stories of two countries, the tales of two countries that is China and Poland that how with the help of uh, people's voice these countries finally transited to democracy. Right now under this topic uh, that is phases in the expansion of democracy we will start uh, with the beginning that is uh, we will start with the phase uh, from 1900 to 1950 uh, that uh, which all countries uh, had democracy <coughs> and uh, how they uh, worked for uh, getting democracy then the phase 1950 to 1975 when most of the countries were colon were under colonial un under the colonial masters then the present era that is the contemporary time where uh, that whether all whether all countries are dem uh, actually democracy or not they are democratically elected or not or whether still some of the countries don't enjoy the privileges which is being enjoyed by the democratically elected government <clears throat> by the democratically elected government. So, right now we will start with the phases in the expansion of democracy. Phases in the expansion of democracy. So, we will start with 1900 to 1950. During this period, if we will see that during this period, <coughs> most of the countries were not democratically elected. Only few of the countries were democratically elected during this phase. That is, uh, during this period, uh, only Europe, Latin America and North America. The countries of these continents only had um, democratically elected government. Not all countries, but uh, most of these uh, countries, most of the countries of Europe, Latin America, North America were democratically elected. <clears throat> and in Asia and Africa, Only few countries were democracies. During this period, people struggled for democracy. They, most of these struggles centered around political rights, equality, freedom, liberty. These were the things which were people were demanding during this phase. And <clears throat> most important, people demanded right to vote. That is the universal adult franchise. This was the most political right which people demanded because it was uh, through uh, this right that uh, people could actually change the history of their country. They could actually be called democracy if they were given, if they were actually given this uh, right to vote. In most of the countries at that time, though democracy came in, but still most of the people, most of the adults, were not given the right to vote. There were so many discrimination on the basis of gender in giving this right to vote. Women were not allowed to exercise this right. Only few privileged people were allowed to vote for uh, electing the uh, people, for electing the representatives. Then later on, in some countries, it was a uh, uh, tradition that only those people who owned land were allowed, were given the right to vote. Then finally, the people in almost all these countries fought for granting this right to vote. And New Zealand was the first country to give to all its citizens right to vote irrespective of caste, gender, status, place of birth. This New Zealand in 1900, it became the first country to give 
right to vote and slowly slowly all other countries followed the same principle in india um, uh, the framers of our constitution were quite aware of uh, this problem and as soon as our constitution was framed or it was framing in 1950 it was framed in 1950 the constitution makers make it a, make, make, make it a point that every person irrespective of caste gender place of birth was given this right to vote so in india as soon as the constitution came into being the people had this privilege of universal adult franchise so this was the situation in 1900 to 1950 and during 1900 to 1950 only some countries of europe most of the countries of europe latin america and north america were democracies but uh, the nations were the countries of asia and africa had only uh, few countries which were democracy only two or three countries were democracy then the right to vote was not granted to all people have to fight for this right that is universal adult franchise and new zealand was the only country till 1900 which gave the right to vote and in our country the right to vote was granted as soon as the constitution came into being that is 1950 then we will study about the next phase in the expansion of democracy that is the period between 1950 to 1975 during this period most of the countries of asia and africa were colonies asia and africa they were colonies colonies but they become but they but most of the countries of asia and africa they became independent as soon as uh, as soon after second world war or most of the countries of asia and africa they became independent immediately after second world war india was one of them world war in 1975 <coughs> in 19 sorry 45 so during this period 1950 to 1975 most uh, uh, of the countries of asia and africa were colonies and again Uh, the countries of europe north america south america um, most uh, they were democracies but uh, these countries of asia and africa immediately after second world war they gained independence they became independent immediately after second world war in 1945 but we had seen that uh, though they gained uh, independence immediately after 19 uh, after this second world war but they couldn't uh, remain democracy in a long run the rulers who had uh, fought for democracy actually they started thinking that uh, the rule uh, that uh, they started thinking that uh, finally it was they who were the ultimate rulers it was ultimately they who had uh, brought uh, the country to this phase to the democracy has given uh, people certain rights so it is their privilege to rule the country for whole life one of such ruler was the ruler of ghana it was a south african country and uh, it though it became a role model for other african countries but uh, its ruler khom nikru meh though he fought uh, for its independence and gain independence in 1957 but uh, after gaining independence he thought that he would be the ruler for life which was not accepted by the people he started uh, giving the pronouncements which became the law for the country and uh, finally the people they ousted him and again <clears throat> democracy was restored finally democracy was restored because of because under the under the leadership of khom nikruma but again he turned to be a despotic ruler because uh, he wanted uh, uh, the country to be under his rule for life finally people voted him out they didn't uh, wanted him 
the ruler and finally democracy was restored in Ghana. So most of the countries at that time, if uh, we go through them, we had seen that uh, they fought for their independence, the leaders under which countries fought for their independence, ultimately they became the dictators. They started doing the same things which the colonial masters were doing. So the people raised their voice and ousted them and again democracy was restored. So this kind of a phase continued in the countries of Asia and Africa. It was only India which maintained it, its independence since 19. 47 till now and it is considered to be one of the largest democracies in the world. Then the last phase is the contemporary phase that is the recent phase. In the recent phase um, several countries of Latin America which were again uh, transited to autocratic rule, they revived uh, their uh, democracy, democracy was revived in several of the Latin American countries and then came the disintegration of USSR. After the disintegration of the Soviet Union, that is USSR, its hegemony over most of the countries of East Europe finished. So, the disintegration, Soviet Union was one of the most powerful countries, but after the disintegration of uh, Soviet Union, uh, so many countries were under Soviet Union, but after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, its dominance over most of the countries of East Europe finished and most of the countries of East Europe, they became democracy. Then, in our own um, continent, we can, we could see that Pakistan and Bangladesh were earlier under the military rulers. They were under the military rulers. There was army rule, but, but in 1990s, they transited to democracy. Transited to democracy. But though here also in Pakistan, um, especially in Pakistan, the democracy could not be retained for long as in 1990 under General Parvez Musharraf, under Musharraf again military rule was restored, again military rule came in. So this kind of a situation kept on uh, going uh, where uh, some countries, they were democracy, they transited to military rule and again the military rule to democracy rule. And finally, in the present scenario, if we see most of the countries are right now democratically elected where people are given uh, certain basic rights to the, where each of the democracy give basic rights to its people, they respect the basic rights of the people. If we take the history of Myanmar also, Myanmar, earlier known as Burma. Burma, it gained independence in 1948, became free in 1948, gained independence, but 1962, it was under military rule, military coup, the military coup of 1962 uh, transformed the democ democracy into a uh, military rule. Again, in 1990, uh, though elections were held for the first time, but the military rule didn't accept the elections as most of the seats were won by the leader of uh, National League led by uh, Aung San Suu Kai. So, <clears throat> these military le leaders, they were not at all satisfied with the result as they thought that most of the seats would be won by the party which they had framed, which was 
uh, which didn't turn into reality and as a result they again restored the military rule over there she uh, the leader of uh, this party that is uh, national league which won most of the seats she seats she was put behind the bar bars she was uh, and almost all the leaders they were put behind the bars she was uh, into house arrest for so many years so this was the kind of scenario in nepal also if we will see the situation in nepal also the king gave up the powers king gave up powers in uh, king gave, gave up gave up powers to become a constitutional monarch constitutional monarch means the kind of monarch who would be ceremonial and all the power that is uh, the kind of monarch who would be ceremonial that is all the powers would would be vested in the prime minister and he would be just the titular head he would just be there as a ceremonial head but again in 2005 the new king again restored monarchy over there so uh but after few years again democracy was restored and uh, the parliament was given the full power so this kind of a situation went on going in the contemporary phase after uh, the, the phase after 1975 so right now we had studied about uh, the three phases in the expansion of the democracy that is from 1900 to 1975 then from 1975 from the, then from 1950 that is first phase we had studied from 1900 to 1950 then 1950 to 1975 and then the contemporary that is the recent phase in 1950 we had seen that uh, only few countries of uh, latin america north america and europe were democracies and uh, the asia and uh, africa Uh, most of the countries were colonies then in 1950 to 1975 we had seen that uh, some of the countries of asia and africa had gained independence they gained independence because of uh, the long national struggle they were uh, fighting for uh, for their independence and finally when they gained independence they tried to restore democracy in all possible ways but in some countries uh, like uh, we had seen in nepal pa uh, pakistan Bang uh, nepal and pakistan like we had seen the democracy was restored immediately after second uh, world war but they couldn't retain their democracy because of the internal politics because of the internal coups and uh, right now uh, most of the countries of the world a democracy or if they are not democracy they are striving for the democracy almost democracy is such a important thing that even the country which is not democracy feels pride to call itself a democratic country even if a country is under a monarch he will say that oh my country is a democratic country so the word democracy gives so much of respect uh, to its citizens that uh, even the people strive to live in a democratically elected country so that's all under this topic thank you